I'm standing on the banks of the Nueces River. Now, if you were to go back to the 1840s, this would have been the border between Mexico, at least this is according to the Mexican government, between Mexico to the south and the breakaway province of Texas to the north. Of course, the Texans, they've been enjoying their own independence since the 1830s. And according to them, the border is the Rio Grande. So if you were to drive from here to the Rio Grande today, you'd have to drive south two and a half hours. That was the border in the eyes of the Texans and the Americans. But to the Mexicans, who still haven't even recognized Texan independence, let alone annexation to the United States, this was the border, the Nueces. So you have this strip of land between the Nueces River here and then way south, the Rio Grande, that is claimed by both sides. So whose is it? Is, is this strip from Nueces to the Rio Grande, is it American, Texan, or is it Mexican? Well, it just so happened this was a time in United States history when a sort of new idea was floating around. Really, it was a recycled version of an older idea, but it had gotten a new name very recently, and that name was Manifest Destiny. And there were those who felt that it was the, the United States' manifest destiny to not just spread from coast to coast geographically, but to spread the great project of liberty, of uh, local self-government, of federalism, all the way to the west coast and there were those who felt that it was just a matter of time but before California became part of the United States this was all one day going to be US territory US land Mexico didn't have very many people up here Mexico really didn't have much real authority on the ground here and uh, of course none of these claims take into account the hundreds of thousands of native local inhabitants of non-European, non-Mexican descent. But be that as it may, all of this was Mexico. Um, and there were many in the United States that had their eyes on California, but you can't just march into California. It would have been, you know, roundly condemned. You have to have a, a, some sort of pretext to be able to take California. So what might that pretext be? Well, it just so happened that this strip of land from this river all the way to the Rio Grande in the south provided an opportunity for a pretext. If you could somehow get the Mexicans to fire first, you could use that as an excuse to declare war, get a declaration of war from Congress, and then you could go take California. But you had to find a place and find a situation where that might be possible. Well, right here, where there is an active border dispute, that's possible. And so President Polk organizes for Zachary Taylor and a, his army to march down here. They cross the Nueces River. So from a Mexican point of view, they have brought an army into Mexican territory, okay? Uh, and marched all the way to the Rio Grande, okay? And they actually built a fort right there on the Rio Grande. So deep into what the Mexicans consider Mexican territory. The point being to provoke the Mexicans into meeting them and hopefully having a skirmish at which point the president can ask for a declaration of war. And that's exactly what happened. The Mexicans sent up a force. There was a skirmish. Uh, blood was shed. And the uh, American president, James Polk, was able to get up in front of Congress and say, American blood has been spilled on American soil. Of course, that's disputed from a Mexican point of view. American and Mexican blood had been spilled on Mexican soil. Be that as it may, this is what was needed. A declaration of war was given, and on day one, an army was sent where? Thousands of miles away to California. Sort of uh, maybe gives us a clue as to what this war was really about. A couple other armies were sent into Mexico, one from the north and one uh, by sea that would go on to take Mexico City itself. By the end of the war, the U.S. had vastly increased its size. Mexico had lost two-fifths of its territory. And, uh, you know, California, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, uh, parts of Colorado, Wyoming, this had all become part of the United States. Uh, throw in the Gadsden Purchase just a, a little while later, and you have the, the same borders, at least the continental United States borders, that you have today all acquired 
as part of the Mexican-American War or part of the Mexican War or the American War, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the names are disputed because it's such a hot-button issue, and it should be. It should be. We're talking here about what was supposedly, at least this was the way it was presented to Congress, a very limited border dispute right here, right where I'm standing. And yet, as a result of this limited border dispute in southern Texas, you have the U.S. gaining vast tracts of land all the way up to and including California. So how does that, how does that quite work? But that's, that's what happens. And a, a precedent has been set here. Many precedents are set here, actually. This is, this is a very uh, uh, underappreciated, in terms of its historical significance, underappreciated war. A lot of new ground being broken by the U.S. government here in terms of establishing various military and political traditions. One of those traditions is the tradition of the U.S. president creating a pretext for war, presenting it one way, and then after the fact uh, having it be discovered that actually things didn't quite happen that way. Uh, many, many wars following this one will begin with an incident some sort of pretext or excuse uh, that will be presented to Americans, to Congress. It used to be to Congress. Now we don't even get congressional declarations of war. But uh, will be presented to Americans one way, only to find out later that it happened another way, if it happened at all. And you can go all the way down the list from uh, the American Civil War, the Spanish-American War, uh, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, uh, the war in Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, they all start with incidents like this. Incidents that later turn out to have been manipulated or fishy or to have been, uh, you know, complete hoaxes in some cases. Uh, that's sort of what happened here. You got to get California. President Polk campaigned on this issue, among others, but he can't just march in. He needs a pretext. He got it here at the Nueces River.